1932, the United States Public Health Service, in collaboration with Tuskegee University in Tuskegee, Alabama, began a study to examine how untreated syphilis affected African American males. Formally, the study is known as the Tuskegee Study of Untreated Syphilis in the Negro Male, but it is now more widely referred to as the Tuskegee Experiment. 600 African American men were recruited into the experiment. 399 who had syphilis and 201 control participants who did not. From the onset, the purpose of the study was kept secret. Lured into participation with the promise of free health care, free meals, and burial insurance, they were told only that they would be treated for bad blood, a colloquial term that's used as a general reference to a number of potential medical ailments such as anemia, fatigue, and syphilis. The men who were enlisted were mostly sharecroppers coming from desperately poor backgrounds in Macon County, Alabama, many of whom had never even had the opportunity to visit a doctor. The promise of free health care and free meals to these impoverished individuals was an irresistible proposition. These participants had no way of knowing that the entire premise was based on a lie. The medical professionals in this experiment had no interest in curing them of the so-called bad blood. Instead, they wanted to track the course of their deadly disease without any substantial medical intervention. Deceitful tactics were used to trick participants into coming in for painful medical procedures. In letters sent out by Macon County Health Department, participants were urged to come in for their last chance at receiving free, special medical treatment. That free treatment was in fact an incredibly painful diagnostic lumbar puncture that did nothing to help the victim. When the study began, there was no cure for syphilis. Even with the most effective remedies of the time, the disease would be expected to run its course, along the way causing many severe symptoms and ultimately leading to death. What makes the study especially horrendous is the fact that by 1943, penicillin was known to be an outright cure for syphilis and was becoming widely available. Not only did the experimenters refuse to treat participants with penicillin, they actively worked to ensure that participants remained ignorant of the cure, instead continuing to treat with placebos and other ineffective methods. The premise of the study was supposedly to prove how the disease affected black men differently than white men. The organizers hypothesized that white men were more likely to suffer from neurosyphilis, which is when syphilis progresses into the brain and causes neurological symptoms, and that black men were more likely to suffer cardiovascular issues from syphilis, which produces symptoms relating to the heart. This infamous experiment was inspired by the 1928 Oslo study of untreated syphilis, which collected and pieced together information on hundreds of white men who had untreated syphilis. It's important to understand the critical differences between these two studies. The study in Oslo, Norway was a retrospective study that took information that already existed in patient histories to determine the effects of untreated syphilis. The controllers of the Tuskegee experiment actively watched as men suffered from the disease over time, lied to them about the purpose of the experiment, and most egregiously denied them a cure once it became available. The Oslo study did not require men to go through such torture. The justification for denying medical treatment and continuing the experiment was rooted deeply in racism. Sadly, it is a reality that the United States has a long history of bias and discrimination against African Americans, which was prevalent well into the civil rights era and, frankly, its remnants still persist. To defend the continuance of the study, Talia Farrow Clark, who was head of the U.S. Public Health Service, was quoted as saying, the rather low intelligence of the Negro population, depressed economic conditions, and the common promiscuous sex relations not only contribute to the spread of syphilis, but the prevailing indifference with regards to treatment. Take a moment to really think about the depth of hypocrisy that sentence conveys. 
He insists that African American men were not interested in receiving treatment for a serious disease. However, the Tuskegee experiment was able to successfully manipulate African American men into enlisting specifically by leveraging the promise of free health care. If African Americans really didn't care about medical treatment, it's hard to imagine this tactic would have worked to draw in so many. Taliaferro's quote is clearly inconsistent with reality. Instead, it demonstrated a shameful contempt and lack of respect and empathy for the black population. It's hard to imagine, but what started out to be a six month long experiment continued for an astonishing 40 years until 1972. There's no way to know how long it would have persisted if it wasn't for Peter Buxton. Buxton was a venereal disease investigator for the US Public Health Service who eventually learned about the Tuskegee experiment through colleagues. Years later, he would relive that discovery by saying, I didn't want to believe it. This was the Public Health Service. We didn't do things like that. He vehemently protested the experiment with the service's division of venereal diseases on the grounds that the study was unethical. His protests were subsequently denied by the CDC, who stated that the study would continue until all participants were dead and able to be autopsied. Peter Buxton could not accept that answer and filed another protest in November of 1968 pointing out the political volatility of the study in regard to human rights following the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. earlier that year. Again, his protest was denied. Realizing that his appeals to the public health services were futile, Buxton leaked information about the experiment to Gene Heller of the Associated Press in 1972. The secret experiment was quickly exposed making it to the front page of the New York Times on July 26, 1972, with the headline, Syphilis Victims in U.S. Study Went Untreated for 40 Years. The study was quickly shut down, despite the claims of the Tuskegee researchers that the experiment would provide knowledge to benefit mankind. The study is said to be the longest non-therapeutic experiment on human beings in medical history. It was scientifically and medically irrelevant and amounted to nothing more than 40 years of deceit and torture. At the study's conclusion, 28 men died directly from syphilis, and an additional 100 from complications of the disease. 40 spouses contracted syphilis from their untreated partners, and 19 children were born with congenital syphilis. As a result of the study, the National Research Act was signed into law in 1974, which created the National Commission for the Protection of Human Subjects of Biomedical and Behavioral Research. Also in 1974, regulations were passed that included provisions for requiring informed consent for study participants. It's important to note that the implications of untreated syphilis are ongoing. The disease is curable, but many of the symptoms and long-term effects are not reversible. Severe, permanent symptoms include brain damage, central nervous system collapse, blindness, deafness, heart disease, and bone deterioration. The lives of those involved in the experiment, including the wives and children, were irrevocably altered as a result of this heinous experiment. This includes a substantially diminished trust in the healthcare system within the African American community that persists to this day. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Hit the bell icon to get notifications when I release a new video. If you're interested in supporting Mode of Horror and gaining access to exclusive content and merchandise, use the link in the description to become a patron of my Patreon. Until next time.